Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover direct and indirect control in electroneumatic circuits. So the first question, what is direct and indirect control? So when we are dealing with electroneumatic circuits, we basically have two approaches for controlling of the valves in the pneumatic side. And if you look at the electric circuit in this side, you can see we have two switches that are connected to basically relays K1 and K2. And these two relays are connected to two make switches K1 and K2. And both of them are in open condition, as you can see over there. And they are connected to two solenoids. And these two solenoids are basically connected to control valve 1V. So when we are talking about indirect control, we are basically dealing with the combination of switches, relays, make switches, and solenoid, as you can see in here. Instead of having a direct connection between the switches S1 and S2, we have the relays K1 and K2, and they are basically making the connection between these two switches and the solenoid 1Y1 and 1Y2. So that is one approach for controlling of directional control valve or let's say control valves in the pneumatic side as you can see in here so whenever we turn on this switch basically when we push this switch the current can pass through this line k1 is going to be energized and from there we close this make switch k1 therefore current will pass to this solenoid 1y1 it is going to be energized therefore we will have this one actuated, electrically actuated, right? Shifting to the second position and air will pass to here. And therefore we will have the pressure needed to overcome the spring force inside this cylinder. And from there we will have advancing of this piston, right? So when it reaches to the fully advanced position, we can basically turn on switch S2, right? And from there we have K2 energized. Once K2 is energized, basically K2 is going to be closed and we have 1Y2 energized. And from there we will have this 1Y2 solenoid actuated. Basically we will have electrical actuation for this solenoid returning back to its initial position. Therefore the, cur the air will be exhausted, right? And the cylinder, the piston inside cylinder we retract. So that is how this indirect control works. Let's look at another case. This time we have a double acting cylinder. Whatever we have inside the circuit, the electrical circuit is going to be the same. The only difference that we have is this directional control valve, right? Instead of having a three by two valve, as you saw in the previous slide, here we have a five by two valve right so whenever we turn on this s1 k1 is energized this is going to be closed we have one y1 energized and from there this is going to be electrically actuated shifted to the second position air will pass and from there we would have this cylinder right the piston inside cylinder towards advancing right it starts advancing once it reaches to that fully advanced position if we turn on s2 right we will have K2 closed because it is going to energize K2 first and this is going to be energized. And from there we will have 1Y2 energized and from there we will have shifting the directional valve to its first position and retraction process is going to be started. So this scenario of combination of one is uh, basically switches, relays, make switches and solenoid as you can see here is called indirect control so when we are talking about direct control instead of having this combination of different components we have a direct communication between the switch as you can see here s1 and we have one 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 y1 which is basically 
the solenoid whenever we turn it on this is going to be directly energized and from there we will have this shifting and moving to the second position and whenever we we turn on switch to s2 we will have one y2 energized and from there we will return back to its initial position for basically this valve 1b and the same scenario happens when we are dealing with double acting cylinder the structure for the circuit is going to be for the electrical circuit is going to be completely the same but for pneumatic side we are using double acting cylinder and instead of three by two valve we use five by two valve so as i said instead of having those components for indirect control we have a switch right and that switch is directly connected to a solenoid as you can see in here in the next video uh, i'll show you how we basically actually in the next part of this video i'll show you how we can design these types of circuits inside fluid sync okay we saw the circuits for indirect and direct control in this part of the video i'm going to design those circuits inside fluid sync as we saw, the circuit had two parts as expected for electro-pneumatic systems. Uh, the first part was related to pneumatic side of the circuit and the second part was related to electric part of the circuit. So without further ado, let's start designing the circuit which was related to indirect control of a single acting cylinder. So for that part, the first thing that we need to bring is basically a single acting cylinder and the second part that we need is basically the supply element so I'm bringing the supply element generally we need to have air service unit so I'm bringing the air service unit as well and then from there I'm going to bring a directional control valve which is configurable with three ports and two positions as we can see here and as you might remember based on the slides we need uh, to have manual override right the other thing that we need here is uh, basically this one should be piloted right so let me just remove this first so it should be piloted and then pneumatically actu uh, electrically actuated so we need a solenoid and then I'm going to add a manual override as you can see here and for the other side we have to use the same thing we need to have uh, we have to be piloted as you can see here and then we need to have electrical actuation and manual override so we are done with configuring this directional control valve we can hit ok and then we can connect this one here to the pressure port and here we need to have the exhaust right and then it's going to be connected to the single acting cylinder as you can see now we have the pneumatic side ready just we need to put the the naming i'm going to call this one zero z i'm going to call this one one v1 which is basically the directional control valve that i have and here i'm going to call this one one a right so this is the pneumatic side with all symbols needed the next step is designing the uh, electrical side of this circuit right so we go to electrical control unit that we have and we need to bring the power supply right so 24 volt and the other one is going to be zero volt extending this a bit because we need to connect the other components to this wire at the end right so this is the next part that we need here we need to bring switches so the first one is going to be coming from the manual switch i'm going to bring the push button one so this is the first one we need another one right so these are the switches that we need and also we need to have two make switch so i'm bringing both of them here so two make switches as you can see and the next thing that we need here is bringing the relays right and relays are located inside relays 
so we need one for this one and the other one for here right and the next component is solenoid connecting solenoid here and another solenoid here now we have every connection needed uh, and also basically every components needed for the circuit are ready the next step is basically making the connections right connecting this to here connecting this part as well the other one and the next one is going to be connection of the relays and for the solenoid we can do the same so connecting solenoids now we have solenoids relays all connected we have to put the naming so i'm going to call this one 1s the second one 2s here i'm going to have uh the <clears throat> The relay calling this one k1 calling this one k2 head okay and here we are going to have basically this is a make switch right the make switch is going to be connected to k1 the first one which looks at the state of the k1 whenever it is energized this is going to be closed and here we are going to have k2 connected right so k2 head okay and then head okay here right so here what you would have is basically the solenoid i'm going to call this one 1y1 heading okay and this side is going to be 1y2 head okay now 1y1 and 1y2 can be connected to the relays that we have right and the solenoid that we have here right so select 1y1 for the advancing side and 1y2 for the retraction side so from there we have the electric circuit and pneumatic circuit connected so we have the circuit ready everything is basically labeled every single connection is in there we can see how this circuit works now right let's start the simulation as you can see we have the air supply passing through the air service unit and here we have the directional control valve and this directional control valve as you can see is normally closed so it cannot pass the air until it is actuated and shifted to its second position so the first step if you look at the electric side here current is basically somehow blocked because none of these switches are closed right and if i push this button here k1 is going to be energized therefore this k1 is going to be closed and from there we would have one a one y one energized this is going to be shifted to its second position air will pass and from there we will have this single acting cylinder actuated so let's do that so i'm going to push this you see it, it is basically now in fully advanced position quickly reaches to that position right and if I push 2S, the expectation is the retraction process, right? Because if I push this one, K2 is going to be energized. And from there, we would have this relay energized. And from there, we would have one Y2 actuated and the system starts retraction. So let's do that. I'm going to turn this on. You see, we have the retraction process and everything is kind of uh, indirect because we don't have any sort of direct connection between the switches that we have and the solenoid in the system so if you remember uh, based on the slides we had two circuits one of them was related to a uh, single acting cylinder and the second one was related to double acting cylinder so i'm going to design that one for the electric circuit side we are going to stay the same everything is going to be the same but for the pneumatic side we have to basically change the directional control valve and the actuators so what I'm going to do now changing this directional control valve 
and at the same time changing this directional control valve to double acting cylinder and from there we would have the system uh, basically ready for the operation and indirect actuation so instead of this i'm going to bring a uh, actuator uh, from pneumatic side and this is basically a double acting cylinder removing this uh, one here and we have to go to the directional control valve choose this one right and that is going to be connected here we have this exhaust head okay same thing this side Hit OK. We have these two connected and this one connected as well. So, what we have now is the directional control valve which is connected to this double acting cylinder. So, what we need is configuring this valve which is going to be basically again the same thing. It is going to be piloted, electrically actuated, manual override. And we would have the same thing the other side it is going to be manual override piloted and electrically actuated and then we can say head okay right now the next step is just putting the names so i'm going to call this one 1v1 head okay and 1a head okay so now the next step is basically uh, connecting this pneumatic side to this basically electric circuit. So the only thing that we need to do is just clicking on here, choosing one by one, head OK, and the other side, one by two, head OK. And now we have basically the circuit ready. Instead of having a single acting cylinder, we have a double acting cylinder and we can easily see how the circuit is going to communicate so start the simulation if i push this button the expectation is having advancing process for this double acting cylinder right you see it starts moving towards fully advanced position reaches to the fully advanced position now if i push this button the system retracts and again we have the system and basically the cylinder in fully retracted position so that is how we basically use indirect control for controlling actuators in electro pneumatic circuits in the next part we'll see how we can basically use direct control for actuating of actuators